Hi, Diego. Good to meet you, Sammy. <clears throat> so I'm a financial journalist, as you might know, and I'm interviewing finance professors about their work. And a friend said you were working on something very interesting. Sorry, who told you I do interesting stuff? Uh, <laughs> you just made my day. <laughs> Uh, I don't. I don't hear that often. I'm not, but you know that the, the way it works. Now, what what publication do you work for? Oh, uh, it's um, uh, the the Wall Street uh, Portal. Uh, yeah. So, anyways, um, I looked you up on Google Scholar, and I saw you are really into us financial journalists. So you have a paper called "Journalists and the Stock Market," hmm. and another one called "I Quote." the kinks of financial journalism my girlfriend is very interested in that one uh i also saw something called crawling edgar but i assume that's just a bug that's all my papers um all papers you know most academics don't really care about it's all the new stuff now edgar is the electronic data gathering analysis and retrieval mm you know, supported by the SEC, financial regulator, and that's what U.S. public corporations publish for the results. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I uh, crawl in it quite a bit myself, if you know what I mean. But uh, what are you working on right now? I'm working on a paper titled The Color of Finance Works. Isn't it green? You have a bit of year, huh? You should ask the Wall Street Portal to send you there as a correspondent or something. Just to see how colorful money can be. Hmm. Um, now, we mean it in a metaphorical way. Um, we wanna find out which are the words that people use in a financial context that are either positive or negative. Easy, profit is positive. Okay. And non-profit is negative. Okay, now negating a word doesn't really reverse its sentiment. Sort of like a research shows the negation in general is, is pretty negative, pun intended. Um, we do this using earning calls, which of course are extremely important. Couldn't agree more. Um, earnings are always calling. That's why I'm doing this interview. <laughs> uh, 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 so earning calls are like uh, these conference calls between managers and investors, webcasts, mm -hmm. Zooms mm -hmm. for you maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is where managers discuss with the investors how things have gone in the company you know what what went right and what went wrong in the last quarter what are the earnings per share and so on and so forth the stock market obviously reacts to, to what they say and what we do is we look at the words or combinations of words that are correlated with these stock price movements and that's how we classify them into positive and negatives ceo say something stock market moves we read the words and boom we got new dictionaries. Boom. Okay. Well, uh, why would you worry about combinations of words? I mean, I have a math degree from Berkeley. No big deal. Kind of is. So I do know some things. I mean, if you take two positives, the result, the combination, always positive. Sure. Sure. Now, I, I went to Berkeley too. How was Math 104 for you? Oh, oh Math 104? Yeah, I mean, changed my life. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. I love that class too. I don't know about the, the change my life part of it. Uh, they told me I had to take it because I was wanted to become a dismal scientist and I had to learn some math. <laughs> well, here you are. Absolutely. So, Professor Garcia, can you give me some examples of word combinations in earnings calls that the market of stocks does not like? Uh, no. Can you, I ask you first, how long have you been writing about the market of stocks? <laughs> well, fair question. Not expected. Actually, a couple, uh, just seems, I guess, just uh, maybe somewhere around a couple months. Well, you just used seven negative word words in a row. Well, to be honest, I'm just trying to move from stand-up comedy into financial journalism. Despite challenges, growing pains, slow start, takes time. But on a positive note... That's five more, Sammy. You're amazing. Well, uh, it's been moving a bit faster now, building momentum in a couple of years. No three positives in a row. You are very special. What? A couple years is positive and a couple months is negative? 
based on our analysis, yes, we took these earning calls transcripts from 2006 to 2014. That's over 30,000 such mm -hmm. earnings calls. We broke the text into these individual words, were pairs, and they then we look at how they contribute to the stock price reaction during these earning calls using the multinomial inverse regression model, which is a Bayesian framework, uh, machine learning to try to infer what's positive and what's negative. Isn't it simpler just to ask someone to clarify words? Okay, Sammy, now as a comedian, what would you trust more? A friend telling you that he likes a joke or the audience actually laughing when you tell the joke? Hmm, I guess it depends if I do the joke for other audiences too, and they also laugh. But that's exactly what we do. Hmm. We create these dictionaries using the 2006 to 2014 jokes, if you wish, more precisely earning calls. And then we look at all earning calls after 2015, very different world. And what we find is that the dictionaries that the machine learning algorithm picks are much better at predicting the stock price reaction in 2015 onwards than the dictionaries that were developed by humans. What about word pairs classified by humans? Well, we have like 100,000 word pairs. Would you like to sit down and classify those? Um, we can get back to that later and uh, discuss more for sure. I think there's two negative pairs right there. So I think that means you don't want to do it. I'm still suspicious of a paper written by an Austrian person, person from China and a person from Spain telling me what's positive in English. Isn't that a bit dissonant to you? Look, my English is not getting better. Your English is better. Tim Lauren and Bill McDonald were the ones that developed the dictionaries that we use up to now. Their English is much better than mine. But one thing that Max and one and I can do is code, but we can figure out what words and word pairs the stock market likes. It's the stock market that is speaking these words in our research. We use numbers or algorithms to color words. You're a math major, you should get that. So what's the bottom line of your study, Diego? So up to now, Researchers, when dealing with unstructured data, financial texts, have been relying on dictionaries developed by psychologists or humans specialized in the psychology dictionaries through financial jargon to quantify the sentiment in financial text. We show we can do better using these machine learning techniques, letting the stock market color what's positive and what's negative. And, you know, the bottom line is people should be using our dictionaries and um, they should be citing our work. What if traders want to use it? And I mean, traders, like stock traders, not like they are not loyal. They're welcome to try um, and, and, and they're welcome to cite us too. Um, so in fact, I'm, I'm sure there's tons of hedge funds right now that have the tape recorder of the earning calls and whatever words they say, there's an algorithm behind the scenes taking long and short positions and if they're fast enough, they'll make a buck. So hold on. Your system is better than humans at interpreting one word and probably much better at interpreting pairs of words. But humans are better at interpreting the whole text. Therefore, using intermediate value theorem, there must be X such that for X word sequences, humans are evenly matched with your system. What is the value of X? I like that. I like that intervening intermediate value theorem analogy, Sammy. I, I kind of get it. Humans create the language. We know what we mean. On the other hand, humans disagree. And, you know, one of the advantages of looking at the stock market is that it aggregates all our disagreements. And to the extent that we want to get at that, maybe the stock market dictionaries are better than, than humans. Language is complicated. Stock market is complicated. You can probably all agree with that. All this said, I think we're about to become my favorite financial journalist. Fantastic. So can you now tell me about the kinks of financial journalism? I mean, my girlfriend was thinking uh, we could learn a little bit more. Let's come back to that in a couple of months and we'll discuss more.
Is that a triple negative? Yeah. Love talking to you, Sammy. Catch you next time. Portal out. <laughs>